You're gonna grass stain everything. Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and this is Lucy also from Woodshop Diaries and in this video I'm going to show you how to build these basic Adirondack chairs. Now obviously Adirondack chairs are not a new concept. The style and design has been around for years but there are a million ways to build them so in this video I'm going to show you my take on this modern style Adirondack chair using basic tools and materials. I have the printable plans linked in the video description below so if you want to build your own head over and grab those but if you just want to see how it all came together let's go. Come on. You're gonna have to get out. I can't get out till you get out. Uh, all right. Okay now you get out. Okay come on. Ah. <laughs> let's talk about materials first. Since these will be outdoor chairs, I opted for cedar lumber. However, treated a redwood or another rot resistant option would also work well. Just depends on what's easily and readily available where you are. I also used exterior rated screws and glue with this project so that they won't rust or corrode over time. Altogether, for each chair, you'll need a 1x8 board, two 1x6 boards, a 1x4, and two 1x3s. Or if you have a table saw, you can rip these down from wider boards, which is actually usually a little cheaper. I'll mention some other material alternatives throughout the video that also help save a little on the cost. For now, let's make some sawdust. The first pieces that I cut for these chairs were the back legs. I have a complete cut diagram with dimensions detailed in the printable plans, but the legs are a bit tricky. These are cut from the 1x8 board. To get started, I adjusted my miter angle to 15 degrees and cut off this corner of the board just a little at a time until the cut edge was two and a half inches long. I just completely forgot to move my camera to film that until I already cut it, but I did get a shot of me measuring it after the cut. So sorry about that. Once this 15 degree corner was cut, I measured down 21 inches, adjusted the miter saw to 58 degrees and cut across the board. Now we're not done with the leg yet. Now I need to draw 90 degrees to this edge right here. And I need to draw it all the way up and that's what I need to cut for the top where the seat will rest. And that should be, let me just double check, that should be about 19 inches. After drawing this line, I placed the leg on some scrap blocks, clamped it in place, and used a circular saw and my Craig AccuCut to cut right along this line. And that gave me my first back leg for the chair. Now I hung onto this triangle piece that I cut off here to use in the very last step. I took this leg back to the 1x8 at the miter saw and traced it out to make a second just like it. I adjusted the saw back to 15 degrees and cut the 15 degree mark first, then brought it back to the circular saw and cut the long top edge. Don't forget to keep that triangle off cut. This gave me two identical back legs for the chair. I set the remaining 1x8 board to the side to use for the armrests later. For now, I brought the 1x4 to the miter saw and cut two front legs with mitered ends 20 degrees. Again, all of the angles, dimensions, and cut diagrams can be found in the plans linked in the description. Then I attach these front and back legs together. I laid out one back and one front leg on the workbench so that the bottom of the legs were even with my workbench edge. Since the back leg is resting on top of the front leg here, I used a scrap block under the back leg to keep everything nice and flat. Now, if you didn't have a workbench to line these edges up with, any straight board would also work as well just to help line up the bottom of the legs on the same plane. I arranged the pieces so that the bottom edges were even along my workbench edge and the top of the back leg intersected the front at about 14 inches up. Once I positioned everything, I pre-drilled my holes first, then applied an exterior wood glue and secured with one and a quarter inch screws. Pre-drilling first allows me to move the pieces to add the glue, but still line them back up once I drop the screws. 
I repeated this for the other side of the chair, making sure to mirror them so that this time the front leg is on the opposite side of the back leg. That way, when they come together like this, the two back legs are on the inside, which is where the seat slats will rest later. I cut two 1x3s to run between these two leg assemblies, one for the front and one for the back. I used pocket holes and screws to install these, but regular exterior wood screws would work as well if you didn't want to use pocket holes. I installed one 1x3 flush along the front edge of the leg assembly, then I installed the second so that it was square to the top back edge of the back legs. This should just be directly behind the angle change on the back leg. Once the frame of the chair was together, I double checked the distance between these 1x3s. It should be about 8 and a quarter inches. So I cut another 1x3 piece to this length with the back end mitered 15 degrees. So just in case you wondered what's going on with this board, I cut my 1x3s out of 1x6 tongue and groove because tongue and groove boards are a lot cheaper than 1x6s and the 1x6s are a lot cheaper than the 1x3s. So basically I just was saving some money here using tongue and groove. So if you're wondering why it's got this little tongue on it, that's why. I installed this using pocket holes and screws, but again, regular exterior screws would work as well. All right, well that pocket hole is useless, so we'll just screw it in from the back side. I had to use one regular wood screw here at the back because I drilled my pocket hole too close to the edge. <laughs> Whoops. Now the seat framing is complete, so it's time to move to the back. The back is simply a rectangle made of 1x3s. So I cut four pieces and assembled them using one and a quarter inch wood screws. I made sure to pre-drill all of the holes before driving to prevent splitting. But again, if you wanted, you could also just use pocket holes or dowels here. Just assemble a wooden rectangle frame, however your heart desires. Once this was together, I applied some wood glue along the back 1x3 of the chair frame and clamped this frame so that it was flush across the front edge and even with the sides. I used some more one and a quarter inch wood screws just along the bottom of the frame to secure it to the one by three below. Don't worry if it's a little flimsy at this point, it'll stiffen up once we add the armrest. Speaking of armrest, that's the next part to build. Now I mentioned earlier that I set the one by eight board aside after cutting the legs. I brought that back out now to cut the armrest from. The armrests are 30 inches long from front to back, so I trimmed this board to 30 inches, then I ripped it in half on the table saw. If you don't have a table saw, you can certainly just rip this board down the middle with a circular saw and a cutting guide or a straight edge. No table saw is required here. Then I cut a piece of 1x3 to attach them together at the back to make kind of a U-shaped frame. This was part of my tongue and groove 1x6, so I ripped the tongue off before moving on. I assembled this U-shaped frame using pocket holes and screws. I placed this onto the chair so that the armrests sat flat on the front legs and the 1x3 was up against the back frame. I made sure that the height was even on both sides of the back, then I used exterior wood screws to secure these pieces into the front legs. Then I used a couple more screws through the inside of the back frame to secure that to the armrests on each side. This really helped sturdy up all of the framing and now it's ready for the slats. So I've mentioned this in several videos before, but cedar fence pickets are cheap and they are a great alternative to actual dimensional cedar when you can substitute them. So in this case, I'm going to substitute them for the back slats and the seat slats. Do keep in mind though that fence pickets are 5 8 inches thick instead of the 3 quarter inch, which is what a typical one by is. So they are a little bit thinner than a one by six. So if you're worried about weight, um, definitely go with the full one by six. But in this case, I've got these and these are, I don't know, I think these were $4 a piece. They're only six foot, so that there's that. But these were $4 a piece and I think the cedar one by sixes were like 30 something dollars a piece. So pretty significant difference um, when possible. Substitute cedar fence pickets for one by sixes because way cheaper. 
Anyway, so this is what I'm gonna use for the back slats and the seat slats. So I'm gonna cut these to length and then we can wrap this up. Cedar fence pickets are usually a little rougher and come with a little more variation board to board with their sizing than regular dimensional lumber. But for the price difference, it's a sacrifice that I'm okay with making. Another option if you prefer the thicker sizing but you want a cheaper option is to use tongue and groove 1x6s. In my area, they're about $6 cheaper per board than regular 1x6s. Either way, I cut my slats for the back first and made sure to sand well since these pickets do come pretty rough. I installed four slats onto the back frame, keeping the spacing between boards as even as I could estimate just by eyeballing it. I didn't actually measure the spacing. I secured the bottom of the boards to the bottom of the back frame, then screwed the other end into the top of the back frame, making sure to pre-drill before driving any screws. Once the back slats were in, I added the seat slats. For the seat, I cut three full width boards to go towards the front, but I ripped the fourth picket down the middle to go towards the back. Now you could add a full width board here, but the seat slats will end up sticking pretty far off the front end. I secured these just like the back slats using screws on each side, keeping equal spacing. Now I just have to add one more detail to complete the chair. Remember those triangle offcuts that I kept from cutting down the legs? I brought those back out now. I laid them on my workbench so that the right angles were together at the top, and then I used a speed square along the straight side to find where the width of the triangle was about three and a half inches and marked it. I adjusted my bevel angle on the miter saw to 20 degrees and cut along this line so that the square corner of the triangle was towards the back. Then I cut the second triangle, just like it, swapping the bevel direction so that these pieces are mirrored. These pieces will fit right up under each armrest. They add a little extra detail and a little support to the armrest, but if you don't want to add these, they're totally optional. I just screwed these into the front legs, one screw towards the top and one screw toward the bottom on each side of the chair. And that wrapped up this build. I still need to seal these, but at the time I just didn't have enough clear coat to seal them both, so I'll just come back and do that another day. When I do though, I'll be using Minwax Helmsman water-based clear coat. This is what I use on basically all of my outdoor projects and I just brush it on with a good brush. For now, I'm just gonna try to get the dog to cooperate enough to take a few good photos and show you some finished video clips. I'm so excited to use these this summer and I love that they're lightweight so that I can easily move them from the porch to the yard to the fire pit, wherever. If you'd like to build your own, don't forget to grab the building plans linked below and if you can't wait to see what's next, be sure to subscribe to the channel for all of the latest projects and plans. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.